So I have a lot of people ask me what kind of modifications I do to my Glocks, and I have one right here that I'd like to talk about. This Glock has had about 25,000 rounds through it. I've carried this particular Glock frame for the past three and a half years. It had a different slide on it before, and then I moved um, to a stock slide because I wore that other slide out once that slide hit about 20,000 rounds. And then this slide has had five to 10, so it's actually had close to 30. So a couple modifications I do. I changed out the sights. These are Ameriglow iDot Pro sights. I like these because I have a high-vis front, a blacked out rear, but I still have two tritium ampules which allow me to shoot this gun with night vision. Not as accurately as a red dot, but pretty accurately. And uh, it definitely works up close in certain lighting conditions. So I like that about these particular sights, but they're also very fast because it has a high-vis front sight. So these are about, I think, uh, $90 for a set, and it works very well. I use a stock recoil spring. A lot of people ask me, hey, do you use a tungsten? Do you use a heavier one or do you lighten it because there seems to be no recoil? And the answer is no, I shoot stock. I used to play with tung tungsten springs and tungsten guide rods. Um, they do help a little bit, but stock runs fine. Just get a stock, save your money, spend it on ammo because getting a captured tungsten guide rod is about 80 bucks. It's going to wear out within five to 8,000 rounds. It's going to loosen up and then you have to get a new one. So just use stock or get a non-captured tungsten guide rod so you can swap out the springs very easily. Barrel is stock. There's a lot of cool aftermarket barrels out there. Uh, the year 2016 was the year of the Glock barrel. I've used a lot of different aftermarket barrels, but stock runs fine for me, and it runs fine for most people. So don't spend money on an aftermarket barrel unless you need threads for suppressor, in my opinion. Use stock, save your money, buy ammo, and training. So that's about that for the slide. I don't play with the trigger. I don't play play with the uh, firing pin spring. That can cause reliability issues if you don't shoot uh, the best, pr most premium of ammo. So I don't play with that. So just changed out sights and left everything else stock. Let's talk about the frame. So the frame received a few more modifications. I stippled it a long time ago. Since then, a lot of the stipple has worn off. I undercut the. Uh, trigger guard, I did all this myself, undercut and then undercut down here so my hand could get a little bit higher onto the gun. I added a extended Vickers slide lock. I like having an extended slide lock. It allows me to manipulate the gun a lot easier and a lot uh, faster because I'm more consistent at hitting it. Uh, I also have an extended mag release. This is a Zevtech concealed small, I think is what they call it. This is a Gen 4 Glock, by the way. And um, this helps a lot with being able to access that mag release more consistently. Um, I can use a stock one, but sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my thumb around there. I have to adjust my grip because I have small hands every time I reload. So going to hit a stock mag release uh, can be a little slow for me because I may not hit it 80% um, of the time or whatever. Or not 80%, like 10% of the time. Something like that. I have a Surefire X300 Ultra on there, obviously. Uh, this is my preferred weapon light right now. I have these in all my pistols. Uh, 500 lumens right there and then for internals this is the big question people ask well do you have a flat face trigger or a fancy trigger or whatever and i've used a lot of those cool flat face drop-ins you know they're going anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars something like that but all i did for this is i used a ghost rocket connector you have to actually hand fit it to your gun so it takes a little bit of time to get it to work just right i added a six pound trigger spring and that assists in the reset as i will demonstrate it helps in aid that, that reset coming off the trigger, having that heavier trigger spring. So that's something I really like about um, the a higher pound trigger spring. You can also get an NY connect, uh, not an NY connector, an NY spring, uh, the New York one, and I'm going to play with those very soon, but those are even uh, tougher than this one, so those should allow you to jump off the trigger even faster. So just those two mods right there, it's about 35 bucks. And uh, that's pretty much it for this pistol. But this pistol has been through a lot. I've shot this out to 200 yards, and um, it's not a problem at all. So I've been carrying this gun now for um, three years before it had a slide with an RMR. Now it has irons, and um, I still can still just carry this gun right now. My next gun, which I'll talk about in another video, is my new Jaegerworks Glock 19 that has a Trigicon RMR and their slide work. It's got a Zev barrel, and I'm going to be doing some other things to it, some different stipple work, uh, some different trigger work and whatnot, and then it has a Cerakoted X300 to match. So this will come next, but until then, hope that was helpful for you guys uh, talking about this gun. I use this from uh, concealment, from war belts, different things like that, night vision, low light, uh, regular concealed carry drills, pretty much everything, and I've shot this gun in competitions. So if you want to modify a gun, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. You can just get little upgrades. Training and ammo is where you should be putting your time and money.